Hi dear, welcome to my channel. My name is Omi Odike Nwachiko and this is The Light. On this channel, God just speaks to us. You know, we study the Bible and God just speaks to us through his word, what his plan is for us now. God talks, touches every aspect of our life just from reading the Bible and spending time with God. So just imagine this is our time spending with God. You get me? Before today's, um, this particular message here, yeah, God led me through a, a, a like a, a time of worship and just soaking myself in the word. And I'm so sure that there's something that he wants us to learn and he needed me to just align with the spirit. So obviously, I already know that this is going to be a very powerful message. It's not about me at all. I just take myself out and God is going to flow through through me. You know to you yeah so we're reading something interesting today we're reading the book of genesis chapter 19 it is about the doom that fell upon sodom um the last episode i told you about you know um abraham you know how god was going to go and destroy sodom yeah and abraham negotiated his way out of like of lots being part of people that were going to be destroyed you get me yeah so now we've gotten to chapter 19 the main destruction of sodom so i let's let's just pray Lord, everlasting Father, I bow myself before you. I worship you. I magnify your name. We've come at your feet to learn your word, oh God. I know that you want to teach us something. And so I open my heart to you. I pray that you just flow. I take myself out of the equation, God, and I just release my mouth, my members, everything about me, my mind. I release it to you, oh God. Use me in every way that you need to use me for your message to hit us in the right way. Use me in that way in Jesus' name. Let your wisdom flow. Holy Spirit, just take control, please. Let this word be spirit and life to us. Let us learn and let your seed be sown in our heart today in Jesus' name. Amen. Now let's start. So Genesis 19 from verse 1, it says, It was evening when the two angels came to Sodom. Lot was sitting at Sodom's gate. Seeing them, Lot got up to meet them and bowed down with his face to the ground. And before I even move forward, I, I want us to see the... The similarity between Lot and Abraham, right? The chapter before this one, they came from Abraham's house, and immediately Abraham got up. Immediately, Abraham, you know, said to arrange things for them, you know, even begged them to stay back. You know, he was going to make them um, lunch and just take care of them, and they agreed. And this is the same thing happening right now. Do you understand? The men just came to the gate, and Lot was sitting at the gate, exactly where he needed to be, right? And the moment he saw them, he just got up immediately. Imagine, he got up immediately and bowed down his face to the ground and he said see here my lord please turn aside and come into your servant's house and spend the night and wash your feet then you may get up early and go on your way imagine and that was the same thing that abraham said please don't go wait come come let me let me like take care of you do you know why i'm trying to in fact i only say i'm trying to why i believe the bible stated this clearly is because i believe that the, you know whoever you're spending your your time with affects your life no matter how you want to admit it or not lot had spent the better part of his years with abraham they must have been so close and so you know for abraham to say you know god told me to go alone but i'm going to carry my nephew with me do you understand and then lot was with abraham all through the journey you know going lot must have seen abraham move from a man who was just going to wherever god god will show him to the point where god began to bless him so lot must have studied abraham's life and seen how he acts when it comes to god because it's not coincidental that the moment the men came lot knew that these people are not even normal people i'm going to get up i'm going to ask them to come to my house it's not going to know at all you get me so whoever you're spending like check your life even like who are you spending your life with like what are you investing your time doing with that person what kind like what are you seeing in your life are you experiencing things in your life that are, and you wish you know it were better maybe you should check and pull around you what are they you know impacting into your life that you don't even know about maybe this is the time to talk and you know to check it in your life right but let's keep reading but they said no. The men said no. That the angel said no. We shall spend the night in the open plaza of the city. However, Lot strongly urged them. So they turned aside and entered his house. And he prepared a feast for a feast for them with wine and baked unleavened bread. And they ate. Verse 4 now says, my light is literally messing up. I don't know what's happening. Let me just adjust this. I hope it's better now. Okay, let's go. So verse 4 says, But before they lay down to sleep, the men of Sodom, both young and old, surrounded the house 
all the men from every quarter. And they called out to Lot and said to him, where are the men who came to your house tonight or who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us so that we may know them a bracket intimately we know what that means right see chapter 18 says that the lord told abraham that the cry of the of the sin of sodom has come to him right and so he was going to sodom to really now test and see if the cry he's been hearing is true so they actually just went there for a test it's amazing because the people of sodom have no idea that they're actually being tested by god that's one the second thing is the bible makes mention of the fact that it was the young and the old men that went there to scatter lord's house and say bring the men that came into your house come let's know them intimately these are men the bible says the men of sodom do you get me why is that young and old because see yeah it's what the young people see the elderly people doing that you do do you understand it's important that you know this so you know that the way you're living your life there are young people watching you you may never know they're watching you but they're watching you and they're learning what you're doing is like take for example i'm a new mom right and there's something i do right now i actually blink fast i'm always blinking like this do you get me because i can't handle light away right and then i'm seeing my son my baby is just nine months he's going to 10 months he literally is blinking like that and i'm trying to stop him like no you can't even pick this from me but he, he's with me he's watching me he's learning it right so it's important that you understand that it is what the young people see the old people doing that they begin to do so that's why you can't just marry just anybody as a woman or as a man because the children you will give birth to it's more than just what you what you think the euphoria of the moment right now when you give birth to children your children are going to mirror what your what your parents are doing so you cannot see the man or the woman having some kind of trait but you're so carried away by that particular thing that you know you just think is heaven when you give birth to children understand that you really cannot it, it's more than just don't do that because i tell my baby now like stop stop but like he's just nine months He's seen mom do it. He's watching me do it. He's doing it too. So the, the, the young ones are going with the old ones. If the old ones are crazy, the young ones will be crazy as well. So they said, bring the men out so that we can know them intimately. But Lot went out of the doorway to the men. And there were men that came into Lot's house. So, But Lot went out of the doorway to the men and shut the door after him and said, please, my brothers, do not do something so wicked. See here, I have two daughters who have not known a man intimately please let me bring them out to you instead and you can do as you please with them only do nothing to these men because they have in fact come under the shelter of my roof for protection verse 9 says but they said get out of the way get out of the way and they said this man that's lost came as an outsider to live here temporarily and now he's acting like a judge now we will treat you worse than your visitors so they rushed forward and pressed violently against lost and and came close to breaking down the door of his house but the men that's the angels reached out with one with your hands and pulled lot into the house with them and shut the door after him they struck punish the men who were at the door of the house with blindness from the young men to the old men so that they exhausted themselves trying to find the doorway let's keep going you guys and the two men in that and the two men as the angels asked lord have you any other hair in sodom a son-in-law and your sons and your daughters whomever you have in this city take them out of here now for we are destroying this place because because the outcry for the judgment against them has grown so greatly before the lord that the lord has sent us to destroy and ruin it that's why you need to understand that no matter how anybody or any like no matter how the society wants to make a particular or any particular behavior look like it's normal oh you're the person who is just wrong because you don't want to do that thing your value has to be rooted in god i remember when i made up my mind to be celibate before i got married it felt like then i i just started to get men and, and when i say i want to be like i'm celibate like in fact i even remember one one guy that i think i had known him in university and he came to me and he was like oh you know oh you know in university he likes me but 
but he was shy to ask me out. But now, you know, he wants to ask me out. I'm like, okay, fine. But now I was giving, I giving my life to Christ. I was, I was in love with God and His ways. You get me? I told him I was celibate, and he made a mockery of me, literally. Like he was like, what, what you mean? Like he said to, like you know, if I did not have a strong foundation in God, I most likely would have said maybe this celibacy is not, is not what I'm meant. Because the way he made mockery of me, like you want to be celibate? Are you joking? He said to laugh. You know But guess what? I had gotten my value and my identity from God and that was what I wanted to do and the, and the guy looked like he was good you get me like he had his own house he was driving a car but the fact that you if the fact that the fact that you even look at me and make a joke of like what I'm telling you is my value right now you shouldn't be in my life I don't care I didn't even care what he had that was a, a sign for me to say you know what leave my life alone so no matter how the world wants to make you feel like, uh, if you're young, in fact, why would you even want to marry as a virgin? Or why aren't you stealing money? Or you know, like whatever it is that the world is almost celebrating right now. And you know in your heart that following God, that is not what you're supposed to be doing. Like that is not what God tells you to do. Don't allow anybody shake your faith make you change. If you're single, you might be saying, well, I mean, in fact, some guys will make you feel like, ah, uh, if you don't sleep with the guy right now, or someone will sleep with the guy who, there are a lot of girls, you know, outside who will sleep with me, you better sleep with me right now. It's better the guy goes to those girls because guess what? What you want is your own person, right? You don't want just anybody. Oh, because, because if you're a child of God or as a child of God, you should understand that you have value and you have a father who has promised you goodness and blessings and your expectations will not be cut off and you know like he has your life all planned out we're not living like trial and error no 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 no. we're living in full understanding of the fact that our father is god almighty the creator of the whole world the one who owns the riches in the whole world so if getting a job means sleeping with with your boss let that job go i remember when i almost got this oil and gas job i was applying for a role like a social media manager role and he was telling me no when he looked at me oh that he was going to give me a pa job i'll be traveling with him i'm just like i've never been a pa before why would you want to get give me a PA job? You told me I'm coming for this road. That was what I applied for. So I'm like, but I already knew that, you know, he wanted me to travel with him and I'm smart. I kind of know what he's talking about because after the interview, he says to call me, I, I want to come to my house. I knew that that wasn't the job for me. At that point in time, I was flat broke. I needed money, but that was not what I was going to get myself into because God is watching. And God is trying and God is testing. God literally came to Sodom to test them. Imagine these people are just gotten free blindness. The men who came to Lot's house, the angels struck them with blindness just because they were doing things. And look at this, the, the, the city is about to be destroyed. And that was how Lot and his family members got saved. You don't know what God is saving you from or saving your family members from because of the decisions you're making, because of how you're living your life. You don't even know the kind of ditch you're entering into because of what you, what you have followed the world to do. This is the time as a child of God to get your act right. Who are you standing for? Even God says, if you're neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out. Now, in the kingdom of God, it's not a time where you're just standing on the fence. It is... Are you going to come fully into the kingdom of light or are you going to be in the kingdom of darkness? We got to know now. And I mean, we know that there's so much blessing in the kingdom of light. There's so much security, safety, assurance, protection in the kingdom of light. Why wouldn't you want to come in fully with your chest? Well, let's keep reading. So Lot went out and spoke to his son-in-laws. Listen, oh, and spoke to his son-in-laws who were betrothed and legally promised to marry his daughters and said, get up, get up, get out of this place for the Lord is about to destroy the city. But to his son-in-laws, he appeared to be joking. When morning dawned, the angels urged Lot to hurry, saying, Get up, take your wife and your daughters who are here and go, or you will be swept away in the punishment of the city. I, I, I think this, all, this also ties back to like who, who, who is around you? Who are you listening to? Because imagine how, just, just imagine how like breakthrough literally comes to the son in law and they thought he was joking. Like, what are you feeding yourself? So that when the word of the Lord comes, you will know it's the word of the Lord. And when the wrong word comes, you'll be able to decipher 
discernment of spirit is what the Bible calls it, and the Holy Spirit gives us. Because God is always, see, God is always speaking to you, and God is always sending you messages. God is always speaking to you, but some of us are too distracted to even hear the voice of the Lord. Like the brother-in-law saying, oh, this guy is joking. What do you mean he's joking? He's telling you he's about to save your lives. Hallelujah. Let's go. But Lot hesitated and lingered. The men took hold of his hand and the hand of his wife and the hands of his two daughters because the Lord was merciful to him for Abraham's sake. And they brought him out and left him outside the city with his family. When they had brought them outside, one of the angels said, Escape for your life. Do not look behind you to stop anywhere in this entire valley. Escape to the mountains of Moab or you will be consumed and swept away. But Lord said to them, Oh no, not that place, my Lord. Please listen. Your servant has found favor in your sight and you have magnified your loving kindness, that's your mercy to me by saving my life. But I cannot escape to the mountains because the disaster will overtake me and I will be killed. I want to stop here at verse 19, right? And I want to go a step behind where um, the angel said to him, Escape for your life. Do not look behind you or stop anywhere in the entire valley. Escape to the mountains of Moab or you will be consumed and swept away. Hallelujah. Let's talk about that. I have a personal experience about this and I actually wrote it in my book. So I'm writing a book. It's going to bless you really. It's going to liberate you from fear and the, the, the shackles that fear puts us in. God literally gave me the key to break out of fear and I'm sharing it with you in the book I'm writing yeah so I shared that experience in the book as well you get me because see yeah there are things in your life that God has told you and he's telling you to stop doing it and to let it go forever the sooner you understand that you have to listen to God right and let that thing go the better for you and when you let it go don't look, look back just like the angels were telling Lord if you look back you will be destroyed escape for your life this is an escaping time i had a dream so before the dream god had been telling me god there's just something that i used to do in my business and it was yielding me money i i was really i mean it was yielding me money why can't i just do it sometimes i have to bend my value sometimes i have to act like whatever i'm talking about is not really a sin because you know that's what's happening in the culture i'm just going to talk about it still do you get me here yeah, because I, I i used to analyze this show and so whenever people go on the show and maybe they had you know they kiss they you know as you know just touch each other, get intimate. I will not come and say, oh, that's bad, that's a sin. I'm just, I'll, I'll just literally talk about it like it's a normal thing. You get me? Yeah. And, and, and God was calling me to, to represent him. And it was really hypocritical for me to be representing God on one channel and go on another channel. The same me, the same camera I'm, I'm talking to and be acting like a scene is not a scene. And so God had been telling me for a long time to stop it, stop it, stop it. I was just like, you know what, God, I can't, I, that can't be you. You can't see this thing making me so much money. And to get to the point where the Holy Spirit had to tell me, this is not your source. Your source is God. Why are you acting like this is your source? I didn't want to listen, right? And so one time, God had to speak to me in my dream. So I had finally agreed to stop it. I was, in fact, I just like, you know what, okay, I'm, I'm going to stop doing it, right? And so I stopped. Two weeks after I stopped, they were about to like, start a new show, which was supposed to be bigger and stronger. And I had this dream. And in this dream, yeah, I saw, I, I was with somebody. And I knew that I wasn't supposed to be there with those people. And so this, the, the person I was with was even accusing me of something I didn't even do. And so I left him to go and maybe apply for a job or to talk about a job I was supposed to get, right? And on my way there, I heard a master sending his, like his men, his soldiers, the soldiers were like lions, go and consume that man because he's, he's, he's living in sin that I don't want him to live in. Do you get me? And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so happy. I'm so happy that I'm not with that person, you know, because they will not consume me, right? So while I was going to meet the other person to discuss my job, I said to few about that, ah, you know, I, I could have explained to this person better. And before you know it, I literally found myself going back to that house. Me who heard that that lion was supposed to go and consume that person. I 
was going back again because my emotions were controlling me. I was not making that decision based on my own logic. This is in my dream, literally. Because I felt like, ah, I could have spoken to the person better. I could have explained to him that I wasn't cheating on him. I was without that guy just for, like, business purposes. You get me? And I was going back. And as I was going back, I was telling myself, I hope that lion does not consume me. And as I got back, the lion saw me. And they ran to consume me because it was supposed to consume everybody in that in that you know environment because they were they were disobedient to the word of the, or to the to the to the to the decree of the king. You get me? And I woke up, and immediately I woke up. I knew that God was trying to tell me, "I have told you to go, go, don't look back." And it's amazing because. I didn't even know I was going to share that dream with you. In the moment I woke up, I just knew that I'm not doing this thing again. Like, I'm not doing it again. Like, I'm done with it. You get me? Yeah. Trust me, I struggled with letting go because I, because I, I really began to see that thing as my source. Because making me so much money, it had to be my source. Sometimes, you, you don't even know what you have raised as an idol. You think you just love your job. Your job is paying you so much money. But if your boss tell you to lick the floor you will lick the floor your boss has taken the place of god in your life there's some things that you don't do to like the only person we give it to is god the moment you begin to see yourself yeah giving that reverence to another human being that person is an idol to you and if you walk closely to god god will begin to show you those things that you have upholded above god in your life and when god tells you to leave it leave it alone because you do, see, life, I told you, is a test. Remember, the angels came to Sodom to test them. To see if the outcry of sin that they were hearing from heaven was really true. And when they came, as soon as they got there, after it, they saw that it was true. And immediately they saved them and told them, don't look back, go. There are things that, in, that maybe God is telling you right now. You've done this thing too much. Don't do this again. Let's just, I don't know, but this example is coming to me. I'm going to say it. Maybe you've been, you're dating this man and you've been sleeping with him. Or that's even fornication. And you've been getting pregnant and this is the second time and the third time. And you've been taking out the baby and God is looking at you and saying, stop doing this. But you know, you're so emotionally involved with that man. And you feel like if I if I don't sleep with him again, another girl will sleep with him. He has so much money. He's promising me marriage. A man that is dating you that will entertain the idea of you even aborting a baby for him cannot be the man for you. Do you know the risk you're putting your life in? Literally, you don't even like after in after the process, you literally don't know what went into your system. You don't know. You don't know what happened to you. So God might be telling you, stop doing this thing and you're still doing it and you're still doing it and you're still doing it. God is telling you today, stop and don't look back. If you look back, you'll be destroyed. That, that is a huge message that God really wants you to learn. And maybe that's why God even had me tell you my own story. Because the moment I woke up, I knew that I have just gotten my hands off this thing. If I, if, I, if, I, if I go back, the lion will consume me. In fact, God just showed me what will happen to me if I still disobey him. Because his future for me, his plan for me is way more important than whatever I'm telling myself and lying to myself about. Because who told me that all the blessings I was getting from this thing, God, I mean, see, God owns the whole earth. God was the one that gave Solomon the wisdom that made him the wisest king, wealthy. God was the one that gave David all the, you know, victories in his battles and life. God was the one that blessed Abraham in ways. So who told me that God can bless me and, and, and you know, in, in, in areas I don't even, I can't even imagine. So when he's telling me to stop, why am I see why am I struggling? Why are you struggling with God? Check your heart. What has he told you to stop to let go of this? Why what are you why are you still struggling? Why are you still struggling? Let's go. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. This is the time for you to let it go. And don't look back. If God is telling you, you know what, you've been with this guy for too long, you've been fornicating for too let it go. If you see that you have been with people and you're just dubious and you're, you, you just, all you have been doing is scamming people and scamming people and you're literally kneeling down to God and you're asking him to bless you but you're still going at night to scam people. Are you joking? 
It's theft. God is telling you today, let it go. Leave it alone. It might look like, but how? God, you know, he, I've been dating this guy for five years. If I leave him now, what's going to happen? Will I find another You will find another person because he's your father and he loves you. But today he's telling you to let, and don't look back. Trust God. Follow his, his word. Follow him. Just trust him. Even me right now, I'm in a moment of trust. I'm in a moment of, of, of you know what, I'm going to hold you. I don't know what the future holds, but one thing I know is I'm going to hold you so tight and I'm not going to fall and I'm not going to stumble and you're going to carry me through the ditch and I'm going to come out stronger and I'm going to come and testify. That is the position I'm in right now. And maybe the word also is to me too. So never look back. Don't look back. It will be way worse than you looking back. A bit than what you're experiencing now, I promise you. Okay, let's keep let's keep reading. Mm -hmm. Verse twenty. Now look, this town in the distance is near enough for you for us to flee to. So, Lot is telling the angel, and it is small with a very few people. Please let us let me escape there, so that my life will be saved. And the angel said to him, Behold, I grant you this request also. I will not destroy this town for this town of which you have spoken. Hurry and take refuge there, for I cannot do anything. To punish Sodom until you arrive there. Imagine what the the whole policy and the whole protocol will stop because of one man, Abraham. Because Lot is related to Abraham, the angel is going to wait until Lot escapes. They are ah, God. Let me and my household, everybody connected to me, bless us because of me and my work with you. In fact, bless me also because people I'm connected to. Let God connect me with the right people. Bring the right people my way, the right friends my way, the right community my way, the right tribe my way, the right partners my way, Lord, in the name of jesus that the prayers we need to pray imagine the protocol is being stopped because lot is related to abraham can you even imagine hey hallelujah so that means the the brother in laws would have just been blessing enjoyers by proxy because their father-in-law knows she gets knows abraham but look at them they're back there they will be destroyed hmm. who, who are you hanging out with who are you spending your time with who are they uh -huh. think about it Ha, okay, okay. Hurry and take refuge there, for I cannot do anything until you arrive there. For this reason, the town was called Zoa, few and small. Okay, so 23 now says, the sun, had, the sun has risen over the earth. When Lot came to Zoa, then the Lord rained down brimstone, flaming sulfur and fire on Sodom and on Gomorrah from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew, demolished and ended those cities and the entire valley and all the inhabitants of the cities and, and whatever grew on the ground. But Lot's wife from behind him foolishly longingly foolishly that's what that's what amplified puts in bracket foolishly longingly looked back towards sodom in an act of disobedience and she became a pillar of salt she foolishly she longingly do you understand longingly to long for something is to desire it is to thirst thirst for it she looked back in an act of disobedience what is it if god tells you don't do it don't do it sometimes let me have some sometimes you might be following god right and it looks like ah, ah, okay you took the decision to be obedient to god but it looks like that decision does not make sense like but i don't understand people are not checking me the moment i agreed that okay god now i want to you know, obey you and be celibate. Then all of a sudden, men are coming my way. They're coming my way. They're coming my way. And once I say I'm celibate, they run away. Ah, ah, what's happening? Ah, maybe at some point you'll be like, you know what? Ah, God, I've tried. Five men have come my way, and I've pre celibacy. They've gone away. This sixth man, I no, 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 no. If not, I will lose my man. No. Let me just, you know, I, when I do, I come and say I'm sorry, my dear. It is obedient. What, what happened to lost wife? She turned to a pillar of salt immediately, longingly, foolishly, because it's a foolish decision. If God has told you to, to go on this path, ask David. Go and read Psalm, and David will teach you, because I just finished reading Psalm right now. David is teaching me how, if this is the path that God has put you on, he says go to that path. He says that God's way is tried and trusted. It, it has been passed before. That's why I read in the Bible, so that we see the people who have who lived on God's path and see the end. 
none of them had bad end none of them none of them had bad ends at all in fact imagine so good the part of god is that apostle paul is, was even saying i the prisoner of god he was in the prison he was he writing letters you know the kind of he that one he has sold himself to god like he that he's like man whatever god says i'm going to do i will do it because he knew the greater good hallelujah he knew the greater good for himself so don't look back. Oh. Don't, allow, don't, allow, don't allow anyone, no matter who the person is. Your mother, your mother might be telling you, ah, ah, this is a little bit, I beg, oh, ah, you might, you know, you know, might be, you'll be old, oh, mommy, don't worry. God, God has got me. Mommy, to be a Christian, I pray to God, I'm praying to God myself. Don't worry, God has got me. And God will get you. I promise you, he will. He's God. What can't he do? Has he said anything that he will not do with? It's not possible. He's God. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, let's so so let's read. So she turned to a pillar of salt immediately, right? Twenty seven said Abraham started out early the next morning to the place where he only the day before had stood be, before the Lord, and he looked down towards Sodom and Gomorrah and to and towards all the land of the valley and the Dead Sea, and he saw and behold the smoke of the land went up like the smoke of the, of Cain, that's the furnace. Now when God ravaged and destroy the cities of the plain he remembered abraham and for that reason he sent abraham's nephew lot out of the midst of the destruction when he destroyed the cities in which lot had lived in hallelujah let's just pray that's because of us our family members will not be destroyed amen because of you and i god will not destroy our family members because of people that are in my life god will not destroy me when we, god's instruction will come to us god will send the right people our way we have the segment of spirit to know who to listen to and who not to listen to no wolf in sheep clothing will come into our lives to come and dis destroy us or confuse us the holy spirit is our guide our lead the bible says for as many that will allow themselves or are led by the spirit of god they are the sons of god we are led by the spirit of god we hear a voice telling us what to do and we and we follow that voice the jesus says the my, my children hear my voice and they know it's me the voice of a stranger they cannot follow we will never follow the wrong voice in jesus name Lord, we give you all glory. We exalt your precious name for your word. I, I bless your holy name. Lord, everlasting Father, I pray for myself even and everybody who's watching today that you will just help us and lead us and connect us to the right people and put us in the right crowd and be our guide and be our father. Lord, I pray that because of us, our families will not be destroyed in Jesus' name and nothing will make us look back to that which you have told us to move away from in the name of Jesus. I come against the spirit of disobedience in our life today in Jesus' name and I fill it with the spirit of confidence in you, full knowledge in you and faith and trust in you and obedience in the name of Jesus. Lord, have your way. Introduce Allah by Yakade Bundi Yayaka. Introduce yourself to us, O oh God. Help us to know you, to serve you, to walk with you. In the name of Jesus, have your way, great God that you are. We bow before your throne. We give you all glory. We exalt your precious name. For there is none like you who is like unto thee. I am but I am, ancient of days. I bless your holy name, O oh God. I give you all glory, my Father, my Lord. In the name of Jesus, thank you because you are God and you reign supreme, O oh God. I bow before your throne for sending your word and healing us and delivering us, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Don't forget that God loves you a lot. And if you have any question you want to ask me privately, send me a mail at pennywise1 at gmail.com and i'll respond to you through that mail even or maybe they even do a video if you want that or just comment in the comment section i love you with all my heart you mean so much to me but god loves you more thank you for watching my video Bye bye